Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to do an example of the RL circuit. R stands for resistance and L stands for inductance. So we have, we have a voltage supply which gives us a steady state voltage, a resistor, an inductor, and a switch, and at time equals zero we close the switch, complete the circuit, and current begins to flow. And we want to find an equation that describes the current flow through the circuit as a function of time. We're going to use the technique where we sum up all the voltages around the circuit, which will add up to zero, which is Kirchhoff's rule. So the voltage caused by the battery, which would be the voltage input by the battery, which is the voltage rise, minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which is I times R, minus the voltage drop across the inductor, which is L times di dt, and when we sum them all up, we should get zero, and that's the equation we're trying to solve. Now let's change that equation into the standard form. Remember that the IDT is equal to I prime, so we can say that I minus I times R minus L times I prime is equal to zero. Rearranging the terms, dividing both sides of the equation by L, moving this over the other side, multiplying both sides by negative one, we will get the following thing. We get I plus, or let's see here, yeah, that will be plus that will be R divided by L times I because I'm multiplying both sides by negative one. Moving the E across the other side becomes negative E, but since I multiply times negative one, I get a positive E, but I also have to divide that by L. Remember, I'm dividing both sides of the equation by L. So that's the equation in standard form. We can then say that I, oop, I forgot the I prime here. Can't forget the I prime. So here that would be the standard form that I prime plus some function of time times I equals some other function of time. So this is the standard form of the differential equation that we've seen before. We have I instead of Y, we have T instead of X. So now we're trying to solve that equation, we're going to use the same technique. We know that the general technique for this equation would be that I, which is a function of time, is equal to E to the minus H times the quantity, the integral of E to the H, times R plus a constant of integration. Now remember that H, H is equal to the integral of F of T times DT. And of course, F of T in this case will be R over L. So we know that F of T is equal to R over L. That means that this is equal to the integral of R over L times dt. Since R over L is a constant, this is simply equal to R over L times t. And that can go in here, so we know that I as a function of time is equal to e to the minus R over L times time times the integral of e to the r over l times time, and r in this case is going to be equal to e over l. So times e over l plus a constant of integration. Ooh, I forgot one more thing. Of course, I need a dt in there. Can't forget the dt, so times dt plus a constant of integration times dt plus a constant of integration. Can't integrate without the dt there. All right, so now we need to integrate e to the r over l times time, so we need to have the proper differential, which is r over l, which we don't have, so we have to introduce an r right here, and we have to multiply, uh, or multiply by 1 over r here to compensate for the r that I introduced there. So now I have an r over l dt, which is a differential of the exponent. I can put the e in front, so let me go ahead and simplify that. So we have i as a function of time is equal to e to the minus r over l times time times e over l, so oh, e over r, I should say, times the integral of e to the r over l times t times r over l dt plus a constant of integration. So now I have the proper differential to integrate that. I can now go ahead and integrate. So this would be i as a function of time is equal to e to the minus r over l times time times e over r. We integrate that, we get e to the r over l times time plus a constant of integration. I can now go ahead and multiply this out. And so we get i as a function of time is equal to e over r. When I multiply this times this, the exponents negate. I just get 1 plus a constant of integration times e to the minus r over l times time. So there's the general solution to the initial 
differential equation I got from solving the circuit. Now I still have a cost of integration there which I may be able to solve. I know that when I first close the switch at t equals zero, I must be equal to zero. Now why can I say that? Well with an inductor in the circuit, when you first close the circuit, the inductor will try to stop a change in the current which will not allow the current to flow instantaneously so therefore at the initial first moment when the switch closes I will be zero. So when I plug that in my equation here I get zero is equal to E over R plus the constant times E to the zero power because when I let T go to zero I get E to the zero of course E to the zero is one so I get zero is equal to E divided by R plus C or C is equal to minus E divided by R. I can then go ahead and plug that into my equation here. So when I do that, I combine these two, and I can say that the, the current as a function of time is equal to E over R minus, because remember C is equal to minus E over R, minus E over R times E to the minus R over L times time. I can now factor out an E over R, so the current as a function of time is equal to E divided by R times the quantity 1 minus E to the minus R over L times time. And that will then be the equation that describes the current in the circuit, including the initial value condition. And that's how we solve a system like this.